In this recording, I'm going to discuss eigenvalues and eigenvectors in two dimensions, just using a 2 by 2 matrix. It's not my intention to actually calculate any eigenvalues or eigenvectors here, but rather I want to give some understanding of what is meant by these terms and a geometric picture of what is happening when we use eigenvalues and eigenvectors. To begin with, though, a little revision. First of all, on column vectors. Recall that 2 by 1 means 2 rows and 1 column. I've written a vector v. I've used bold type for vectors, so v is bold, and so are i and j. i and j are the unit vectors in the x and y direction, as usual. v has components, v1 and v2. It can be written as v1i plus v2j, but when we're doing work with matrices, we can sometimes write a vector as a column v1, v2. Two rows and one column. A two by one column vector. What will we be doing with such column vectors? Well, the main thing is we'll be multiplying them on the left with a two by two matrix. We need to remind ourselves how that works. Here's a two by two matrix, A, B, C, D. I'm multiplying it on the left onto the vector v1, v2. Recall that we take the row AB and multiply it by the column V1, V2 and make the sum AV1 plus BV2. That goes in the first place on the right, at the top of the column. At the bottom of the column on the right, we do the same thing but using C and D instead of A and B. So CV1 plus DV2. It's important that you understand this procedure and can do it fluently. I'm now going to choose some actual numbers for my A, B, C, D so that I've got a specific 2 by 2 matrix. I'm going to look at what it does to four different column vectors. Here we go. I've chosen a matrix minus 4, 2, minus 7, 5. I'm going to do the multiplication A, V for various different V's. I've called the answer W in each case. Let's start with V equals 1, 0. I set up the multiplication for W. It's A times V. With 1, 0, that's going to be fairly easy. We just get for the top entry, negative 4 times 1 plus 2 times 0. That just makes negative 4. In a similar way, the lower entry will be negative 7. Just try and remember those two vectors for the moment. 1, 0 and negative 4, negative 7. I'm going to draw a picture of them both on the next page. Remember that the top entry in the column is the component of i and the bottom entry is the component for j. We'll draw these two vectors now. The first one is just i. That's just one unit to the right. There it is, that's our vector v. Now w must go negative 4, that's 4 to the left, and 7 down. There's W. Notice what the matrix has done to V. It's made it longer and it's also rotated it round an angle. We could calculate the amount of these quantities if we wanted. How much has V been scaled and how much has it been rotated? I'll just do the scaling. It's a matter of calculating the lengths. Clearly the length of V, well we can see it, it's just one. On the other hand, the length of W, we use the usual formula, and we need negative 4 squared, add negative 7 squared, that's square root of 65, just a little bit bigger than 8. Our matrix has taken V and scaled it up to a vector with a greater length, root 65. It's also rotated V round an angle. We could calculate that angle if we wanted. But I don't want to do that here, it takes too much time. Generally speaking, that is more or less always what 2 by 2 matrices do to a 2 by 1 column vector. They tend to change the length and to rotate it. Let's see another example. This time I'll do it a bit quicker. This time I've taken V to be the vector 1, 2. We multiply it on the left by the same matrix. I'm still using that same matrix A. I'll do the matrix multiplication now. You can check it if you like. The answer is 0, 3. Let's do a little sketch of this as well. 
Again, I'll do it a bit quicker than last time because we've done it once. The vector v points one unit to the right and two units up. That's i plus 2j, if you like. Its length is root 5. The matrix rotates it and it becomes the vector w, which just goes along the x-axis in the i-direction, three units. Its length is 3. Once again, there has been a scaling from length root 5 up to length 3 and a rotation, again by an angle that we could calculate if we wanted. Now I want to look at two more cases, but these are a bit special and this is where we will discover the meaning of the word eigenvalue and eigenvector. This time I've chosen v to be the vector 2, 7. I'm going to multiply it by a again and look at what happens. I'll write the answer down straight away. The answer is 621. It doesn't look special until we realize that we could factorize out a 3 to the front. Let's do that. Pulling out a 3 gives us back the same vector we started with, 2, 7. a has taken that vector and scaled it up by a factor of 3, but it hasn't rotated it. It's kept the same direction. Let's do a picture again. There's v, 2i plus 7j. And now we can put on w. But it's just 3v. So it's got the same direction, but it's just longer by a factor of 3. In this sense, v is a rather special vector as far as the matrix A is concerned. It gets scaled by A, but not rotated. In many applications, in science, engineering, even economics, vectors that do this have some importance. For that reason, we've come to give them a name. They're called eigenvectors of the matrix A. Notice how I pronounce that. Eigen is a German stemmed word. The EI is pronounced I. In German, Eigen has to do with ownership. So in a sense, this is a vector owned specially by the matrix A. It's the matrix's own vector, an eigenvector. The number 3 is the multiple. That's called the eigenvalue. So we say that 3 is the eigenvalue associated with the eigenvector 2, 7. Let's write that down. We say that A has an eigenvector 2, 7 with associated eigenvalue 3. That's telling us that A times 2, 7 is the same as 3 times 2, 7. There is no rotation. Now notice that I've said an eigenvector, not the eigenvector. Because actually I, A has a second eigenvector. I'll show you which one that is on the next page. Here it is. The other eigenvector is just 1, 1. Or if you prefer, I plus J. When we act with A on this vector, we get negative 2, negative 2. If we factor out negative 2, then we see that W is negative 2 times the original V, negative 2 times 1, 1. Let's quickly draw a picture of this. There's V in the direction 1, 1, and there is W, twice the length, and note this time not the same direction as V, but the opposite direction. It is possible for eigenvectors to be exactly reversed, but they can never be rotated by any other angle. At least, not if the entries in the matrix are real. But complex entries is a quite different story. I'm now going to summarise what we've learned. But I'm going to summarise it in terms of n dimensions rather than just two dimensions. Let's read on the next page. In general, if we left multiply an n by 1 column vector, it's a column vector with n components in, with an n by n matrix on the left, Usually the vector gets scaled and rotated, in n dimensions this time. A vector which is only scaled, or possibly exactly reversed, but not rotated, is called an eigenvector of the matrix. The scale factor is the associated eigenvalue. And finally, an n by n matrix can have as many as n independent eigenvectors but it depends on the matrix. It might not have that many. In separate recordings, 
we will examine how to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a given matrix. We'll do that for 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three matrices, probably. In this recording I told you the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, but we don't necessarily know them in advance. We need a way of calculating them. That concludes my presentation here.